the freedom is declining. Uh, you know, it's being eaten away at the edges by progressive uh, regulations, uh, also mainly more interpretations, uh, and it's being done at perhaps a local level, and maybe not authorized right at the top, but tolerated or sanctioned by the top. And so, what you see is a gradual erosion of the space that we may have enjoyed uh, a few years ago. One is free to, to become uh, uh, a Buddhist from being a Christian or vice versa, or a Hindu to a Christian or to a Buddhist. That's all fine, but the main problem is to try then to convert out of Islam. I think that's when you come up against regulations, laws, uh, practices, uh, which have the force of law and uh, this is where it then becomes a question of uh, should we or should we not as the state allow you to convert out of Islam. It is perhaps more possible, more, ex uh, more maybe tolerable for someone who was a convert and especially people who converted merely for the sake of marriage uh, and who never received any instruction in that religion after, say, a death of that Muslim spouse or uh, a divorce, uh, for their, to, uh, their application to leave Islam to be entertained uh, by the uh, religious court. I mean, social factor is, uh, you know, is a concern as well. You know, some people, even I suppose if there were no law, some people would feel the pressure of uh, requesting their intended spouse to, to convert to Islam because that is the custom and the culture. Um, and, so, and some people in thinking of leaving may be worried about the repercussions that that may have uh, on them in the context of their family, friends and society. To call a spade a spade, I think the reason for these restrictions is very much the rise of uh, a kind of Islam that is political in, in, in nature in Malaysia. And I think it's also tied to the, the sense of erosion of political power that the government of the day feels. And one of the ways uh, it's been suggested that the government is trying to uh, either recover uh, its political support or to consolidate its political support, and especially if you consider the fact that the political su support is only coming from perhaps a, a very narrow constituency. So, you know, the, the simple uh, thing to do is to tighten um, liberties in, in relation to other religions and say to this very narrow conser conservative uh, minor, uh, support that, you know, we are doing something to make sure that other religions do not prosper or do not develop or do not grow uh, either at the expense of Islam or, you know, uh, or cause harm to Islam because of their growth. If you talk about the issue of uh, this heightened Islamization or the heightened focus on, on religion and restrictions for non-Muslim religions, if you see the source of that as political, uh, then one could say that one of the answers to that will be a change in the political uh, uh, governance of, of the country. And you know, th that will happen if uh, you know, there is an election and there is a successful change in power and then you hope that there would be a change uh, in policies. Uh, but if you analyse this as a uh, gradual increase in the desire to uh, make Malaysia more Islamic in that sense, then I think you have a little bit of a problem there because uh, it means that regardless of who is in power, there is some force perhaps that is looking at any and every way to uh, make Islam more uh, a fundamental feature, more entrenched, and to sort of say that all the other religions uh, can only be practiced in Malaysia so long as they do not constitute some sort of threat to the position of Islam in, in the country.